right, Constance here. Welcome back to A Good Life Farm. Although I'm not at the farm, you might notice I'm in a strange location. I'm up in Tennessee for the Homesteaders of America Business Conference, the Homesteading Business Conference. Um, but that's not what this video is about. I'll share all about that in a different video. This is my second um, uh, Canuary, yeah, submission for the Canuary series. Um, now, I have a microphone that goes on my camera and the one that I have used for years was acting up and I bought a new one and this one's a little bit different. It actually has a power button on the back that you can't see so you'd have no way of knowing if your microphone is on. And I accidentally filmed the intro for my video and didn't have the microphone on. And then at the end of the video I also didn't have the microphone on. But I was really distracted, and it was a really good reason, but you'll see why at the end of this video. I did have some backup audio, so it's going to sound a little funky, but you will be able to hear me. But the recipe that I am sharing today is, what is my recipe? Oh yes, curried cauliflower, pickled cauliflower. Um, we used to have this, this grocery store called Earth Fair in our area, and it was a kind of a chain that was all over the place. And they had an olive bar, and on this olive bar was, was this curried pickled cauliflower, and I loved it. And when they went out of business, I was really heartbroken, so I decided I needed to make it myself. And so that is the recipe that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. And like I've said previously, this January collaboration is with multiple channels. It was put on by, I'm drawing a blank, Lisa, Lisa from Sutton's Days. It's been a busy weekend, y'all. And she's actually got a giveaway going on at the end of the month. If you leave a comment on the videos, and there's a video every single day, I will put a link to the playlist down below. You leave a comment, watch the videos, see what everybody's making, leave a comment, and that is an entry to the giveaway for your very own pressure canner. So make sure you watch all of the videos by all of the amazing collaborators who, gosh, two of them happen to be here. So I'm gonna introduce you to them and they can tell you all about what they're making. So this is Anna from Fermented Homestead and she Hello. lives at the moment in Washington. At the moment, yes, I'm in at Washington. At the moment, but she is about to move to the eastern part of the country, a little bit closer. And we have Tanji from Freedom Homestead. So if you guys wanna share what recipes you've already made, or have you done both of your second ones yet? I've made it, yes, it's just not, uh, but not, no, published, not yet. published yet. So it'll be, it'll be forthcoming. So I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. As mm -hmm. she said, I am Anna from the Fermented Homestead. I have already made curry, but of a different variety. It's chicken curry recipe, and that one is already out. And then upcoming, I have a uh, butternut squash soup base. It's not blended up, so you can actually can it, and it is so good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys are really gonna like that one. It is a delicious recipe. I love butternut squash. Mm -hmm. Oh, me so too. Good. Only butternut though. It mm -hmm. has to be butternut. Any mm -hmm. other any other one is good, but it's not as good. Mm -hmm. Well, hello everyone. My name is Tangie from Freedom Homestead. And um, my first contribution to Canuary was uh, beef stroganoff. And um, everyone seemed really excited about that one. I need to do a separate video where I'm going to show how to serve it and also make noodles to go with that. Um, and my second contribution is going to be chicken pot pie filling, which is actually pretty versatile. You can use it in a lot of different ways, but yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty awesome. So be sure to hang out for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I will leave a link to both of their channels down below so you can check them out. And we also have Julie from Rowan Co. Farms who is with us. We are all sharing the Airbnb here Where in Columbia, she? Tennessee. I think she's... She's changing. <laughs> you want to jump in and say hi real quick? Sure. I didn't know I was supposed yeah. to be here. There's Julie. Hello, everyone. I'm not part of Canuary, but mm -hmm. I am going to be part of Fermentation February, which is coming up. So check yes, out. <laughs> which is being organized by the Fermented Homestead. 28 straight days of fermenting recipes yes. by a bunch of amazing people, including all three of these yes. lovely ladies. I'm even doing fermenting. So... We are all here, like I said, for the uh, conference, but we will share all of that in a future video. Here's the recipe. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up my cauliflower into florets. 
bite-sized pieces, you're going to need 12 cups of fresh cauliflower to make this recipe. And to get uh, 12 cups of cauliflower, you're going to need about nine pounds, which is around four or five heads of cauliflower, just depending upon how uh, big your heads of cauliflower are. All right, so over here in my big pot, I've got six quarts of water and I'm going to add two tablespoons of canning salt and then I'm going to bring all of this up to a boil and then once it's boiling we're going to add in the cauliflower for just a few minutes. And while this is coming up to a boil I'm going to go ahead and dice up one red bell pepper and two cups of sliced onions. And we're going to slice up these onions as thinly as we can. Okay, so now I'm going to put my 12 cups of cauliflower into the boiling salted water with canning salt and I'm going to boil this for three minutes and then I'm going to drain it out into a colander and just let it sit while I make the brine. So I'm be careful when you do this so you don't burn yourself. So now I've got a stainless steel pot here and I'm going to add in four cups of water and you would want to use distilled water or a water that is or water that has been filtered with a high quality filter um, to get any kind of 
chemicals or anything like that out because those chemicals can affect the flavor of uh, your pickles when they're canned. So now I'm measuring out four cups of white vinegar. We're gonna add that in. Use this here real quick. So now I'm gonna add in two cups of honey and two cups of granulated sugar. So now we're going to heat this up and let everything in here get nice and dissolved and then we will add in the rest of our brine ingredients. All right, so this is nice and hot, everything is dissolved. So now I'm gonna add in my sliced onions and bell pepper, which the bell pepper is one cup. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Add those in. Then we're adding in one tablespoon of celery seed two tablespoons of mustard seeds, one teaspoon of ground turmeric, two teaspoons of curry powder, and a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And we're gonna bring this mixture to a boil, turn the heat down, let it simmer for five minutes, and then we will be ready to jar everything up. All right, so, bring it out a little bit here. My brine over here is finishing up. There's like 10 seconds left. And I've got my hot jars here and I'm gonna start filling them up with, filling them up with cauliflower. We're gonna fill these up to half inch head space. We're gonna pack, pack them in as tightly as we can get the cauliflower. And I always prepare an extra jar just in case I have a little bit extra that won't fit inside um, the jars that I have prepped. And something I just want to add about this brine, because you're using turmeric and curry, this brine will stain anything that it gets on. So I always use a cloth underneath um, that I'm not going to worry about it getting stained <laughs> because that stuff pretty much stains instantly. And when I heat up my jars, my trick for doing that is, you know, after I've washed them, after I've inspected the rims for any sort of flaws or anything like that, I just fill my clean sink up with hot water and I just let the jars sit in there until I'm ready to use them. That way they're, they're ready to go. I mean, you could set them in your canner and have them just sitting there waiting if you wanted to. That's another option but a lot of times I find that my stove is already filled with things and so just filling my sink with hot water um, does the job. So 
so we've got a little bit extra uh, cauliflower so I'm just going to put it into my extra jar here and if I've got any brine left over I'll just stick that um, in there with that and stick it in the fridge and we'll just eat those right away. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of pickle crisp. Um, this just helps your pickles kind of keep their texture a little bit better. And I'm going to add mm -hmm, an eighth of a teaspoon to every jar. Including my extra jar. And so now we're going to ladle our brine into our jars with all of those beautiful peppers and everything in there. And again, we're gonna go to a half inch headspace. And remember, this stuff is going to stain, so be careful where it drips. And we're gonna take our little bubble wand, get the, give it some wiggles, get the air bubbles out of there. And then if we need to, we'll add a little bit of extra brine to make up the difference. So now I have a little dish of white vinegar here and I have a damp rag and I'm going to wipe all of the rims of my jars down with this vinegar because you want to make sure that these edges are nice and clean before you put your lids on because you don't want anything to hinder that jar from sealing. And we'll put a lid and ring on every jar. and then into the canner. And this canner that I'm using is a steam canner. It is a lightweight version of a canner that you can use for high acid foods. I have a video where I talk more in depth about it as well as a um, article on my website and I will link those down below. And then these are going to process for 15 minutes and it would be the same in a hot water bath canner. So the processing time has completed. My jar sat there for five minutes kind of resting and now I'm going to take them out and put them on my canning mat to cool. All right, so now the cauliflower pickles, the jars, are going to sit for 12 to 24 hours. We're gonna let them cool completely. Mr. Smith is putting dishes away, helping me out in the kitchen because we've got the grandbaby here today. And so those are gonna cool overnight, and then tomorrow I will test the seals. I'll remove the lids, test the seals, label them, and put them away. And because they are pickles, you want to let them sit in the jars for one or two weeks until they have kind of developed their flavor. 
before you crack a jar open. And it's always good to refrigerate them for a day or so. Um, Mr. Smith is over there shaking his head like he can't wait that long. <laughs> it's always good to let them sit in the fridge for a day or so because they kind of crisp up a little bit um, when you've had them in the pantry. So that is it for today. Thanks for joining me here in the kitchen. Be sure to check out all of the other recipes that everyone has shared for the Canuary series. And if you would like to make this particular recipe, I have a printable version of it on my website, and I will put a link to that down below. So that is it for today. Thanks for joining us here in the Homestead Kitchen. My name is Constance, and this is Willow. We'll talk to y'all next time.